What's up everyone, I'm Dave Mack and welcome to a new video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all about the Zone PX5 by Ellen and Heath. This is one of those mixers that is not very well known, but has been around for some time. It has been released around 2016. And uh, yeah, it's one of those perfect marriages where an analog mixer is combined with a digital effects section. So on paper, it's quite an interesting mixer because you get that analog sound plus a digital effects section. Not only that, you get a send return, a master insert and, and a flexible routing system, which I'll go over, of course. Additionally, you get this very nice zone filter, of course, an extra channel, a fifth channel, which doesn't have a fader, but you can use it well for a mic uh, if you do like to MC. Trust me, people don't want to hear an MC, but hey, that's just my opinion. But you can also use it for a line and as an USB in input. So, of course, this also has an, a sound card. So that's very nice. You can actually use it in combination with things like Tractor. Of course, we have a headphone cue, crossfader, which is pretty nice. And in the manual is explained how you can replace it for an innovator in technical detail. So <laughs> if you want to open it up and get this fader out and replace it, well, there's actually instructions for that in the manual, which is pretty nifty. I don't I don't think there's any other company that provides a way an, an instruction on how to open up uh, their gear. But so that's pretty, it's pretty cool. The build quality of this mixer is exemplary. I mean, there's no wiggle room. Um, in the knobs, the channels like the Zone 92 are quick throw faders. So people that like the Zone 92 will like these as well. And we have these uh, silicone buttons, which I normally do, do not like, but these are pretty sturdy, actually. Normally there's always some wiggle room or, I don't know, the, the tactile feel is not quite there, but these are very sturdy enough so that, that it's, yeah, actually pretty comfortable. We've got some switches over here, which I'll go over in a minute. And we have, of course, the, the FX section with all these ways of controlling the FX, which is pretty nice. And I'll go over that in a minute, of course. So let's begin with each of the four main channels. At the top of the channel, we see this slider. We have int, dual and external. And this actually lets you choose between sending the channel to the internal effects, to the external send return, or both. And I'll go over that in more detail later. Then we have the send return knob with which you send the channel's signal to an external effects device. At this moment, I have Octatrack set up as an external effects device, just so you know. Next up, we have a switch to switch between phono, USB and line. You can use the USB input or the line input, or if you have turntables, you can use the phono input, of course. We have a gain knob, and then we have the EQ section. Unfortunately, they didn't implement a four band EQ on this mixer. I really would have loved that. Instead, they chose for a three band EQ, but they are isolators. So they cut the sound completely. Let me show you. and it's completely gone. So that's very, very nice. Okay, so that is that. Then we have the crossfader uh, routing option. You can set it to off and it won't be sent to the fader, which is nice because if you don't want to use the fader, you can simply set these switches to off. So the channels won't be set to either X or Y. And of course, I can send this channel to X and this channel to Y, and I can, uh, then I can crossfade between them if you want to do that. Let's turn, set them to off for now. Then we have a filter on off button, which routes this, the output of this channel to the master filter. And we have a cue on off, which will route the signal to the headphone cue. We have actually a switch to select the channel fader curve. And with that, you can change from linear fader curve to logarithmic or exponential. Linear is my least favorite, basically, because it's... Mm -hmm. 
really slightly uh, higher the volume of the channel. Then we have logarithmic, which is a bit more natural. It's, it's a lot more natural, actually. It's more like our ear, how our ears work. Then we have exponential, which does almost nothing for the entire range, <laughs> but then at the end, quickly dips. And the cool thing for that is that you can actually do this quick. That sort of fader throw you can do with exponential. So that was just one thing that I really wanted to touch upon because some mixers don't have this option and I think it's really nice uh, because you can actually adjust it within your set. If you're like, I wanted to do, I want to do some normal fading, I set it to logarithmic, but then I want to do some uh, fader throws, I quickly set it to uh, exponential and I can do some fader throws and set it back to logarithmic afterwards. As you can see, it does sport some very nice feature. In, in most notably, I think the isolator uh, EQ section is very nice and the center turn routing options, right? So let's move over to the master and the master fader. Of course, we have a master output with which you control the volume with this knob. Then we have a booth output, which I'm currently using. Then we have an external return volume knob. You could see this as an extra return channel without a fader. So it's just, this determines how loud the return signal from your effects unit comes back into the mix. The cool thing about this is we can actually use the filter on that return channel, which is very, very nice. Then we have the master filter, and this is where Alan Heath Zone is well known for. This analog filter just sounds amazing. Very nice. It really has that, yeah, it's just a very nice resonance. You can have a lot of control by using the resonance in combination with the frequency cutoff. So the cool thing about that is, is that of course, when I set it to wild in lower frequencies, you will get these immense spikes and will blow speakers uh, up basically. So you really need to control both when you're using them. And then you get the most out of it. First turn it on. And you can actually use it on wild setting at higher frequencies because you get this very nice. And when you get to lower frequencies, just turn it down a little bit. There we go. Of course, we have a low pass filter. and a band pass filter. Another cool trick is that you can push both buttons to combine these filter circuits, um, even selecting them all. Last one. Cool. 
Well, as you can hear, it sounds really, really good. I really like this filter. And I, I personally used the, the Zone DB4 a lot and they modeled their the digital version of this um, filter quite well. But the analog version still is a lot better. It's just very, very, very nice. I love it. And it's a quite big section, so there's a lot to go over. So let's begin with this top section, which is going to be a little bit confusing. Let's say you walk up for the first time to this mixer. Would you know what this does? I think maybe not, <laughs> because um, it's not very clear which function controls what uh, part of the effects or sent return. It should have been, could have been labeled a little bit better to make this mixer even more accessible. But once you know, you will never forget because it's really not that hard. So we have a couple of options. First, let's begin with this knob. This knob assigns the internal effects section to either A, the A channel, one, two, three, four channel, the master add, and if you set it to send, the internal effects will be used as a send return effect, which means each of these knobs uh, send a certain amount of signal to the internal effects, which outputs its wet version to the master output, just like an external send return, basically. That's where this slider comes in. When I set this to pre-fader, this, this sets if the send return should be pre-fader or post-fader. And this is used for both the internal effects when it's set to send, as well as the external send return. If we set it to pre, the fader will simply do nothing because the signal will be sent regardless of wh where the fader is located to the master, to the effects unit, which will send its wet effects to the master out. If I set it to post fader, the fader will have inf influence on the send return effects. If I turn down the volume of the channel, there won't be any signal sent to the send return or the internal send return effects. Let me demonstrate that for you. So let's first set it to pre fader. And now I'm going to send this signal to the internal effects. There we go. Make sure that it's set to on and the level is set to something above zero. Now I'm gonna turn down this fader. And we're left with only the effects until I turn this off. And now it's off. Now if I set it to post fader, you can already hear the effect. If I now turn the fader up and turn it down, you can actually hear it fade away. There we go. You can do some pretty nice tricks with that. Okay, so that's what pre and post means. And this of course only works when this is set to send or it will only work on the external send return. Yeah? So if I set this to master, you can already hear that the effects will always be post-fader, basically. Because it's now affecting the master output. You can also see that the light color changes when I set it to master or to channel. If I set it to send, this will change to red. If I set it to master, it will set it to uh, a kind of a cyan blue, I think it is. Just an indicator for you, an extra indicator for you that you know what the, the internal effects are doing. Here we have another slider and this sets, this is a pretty cool thing. We can actually route the, the effects to either the X part of the crossfader or the Y part of the crossfader. So let's set it to Y so that when I fade to Y, the effects is faded, fade in, faded in, and on X, the effects is off. Make sure that the effects channel is on, and let's set the X fader to 
all the way to the left of the, the, the curve all the way to the left. So we can slightly fade in FX. Let's set it to lock two. So you can fade in the effects, you can also use it as a sort of an extra uh, trick to rhythmically add some extra hi-hats or extra uh, delay lines as a sort of a subtle creative effect to add some percussion into your overall mix, which is very nice. I use this on a DB4 as well. It works a little bit differently, but it's basically the same idea, which is very cool. So that this is only this section and you can see that you can already do a lot with that and then we have the next section which actually covers the whole fx uh, section and this is the little display it's a high quality display which is very sharp so it's really easy to read we have an fx select um, basically this is a, a an encoder that controls multiple things if i push it i can change the fx engine um, and I have now on time warp, which is pretty cool effects. And if I hold it, I actually get into the menu of this mixer. So this menu basically contro controls um, the MIDI part of the, the mixer. And then we have uh, the beat. This is very similar to uh, something like Pioneer, where you can change uh, how it syncs to the BPM. So the mode button actually controls a couple of MIDI settings. Uh, for instance, which BPM is sent out of the MIDI output and some uh, stop and play controls. Basically, this engages MIDI mode, yeah? So then we have a tap button with which you can, with which you can tap manually to set the BPM. Or you can hold it so it will detect, as you can see. It will now detect. I hold it. There we go. 132. A little bit of jitter. Okay. Or I can tap it once and I can set the BPM manually at which the effects will operate. Yeah. Moving on, we have an interval, a DK focus, and a level knob. This is one of those things that I think. Yeah, it's, it could be improved a little bit. I mean, it would be nice if, if this mixer was the mixer where people could go walk up to and instantly understand how it works. And when every knob does a little bit different things, depending on which effects you have selected, you kind of lose that aspect of a DJ mixer. However, it's not that hard to understand. If you go through the effects and turn these knobs, it's very easy to understand what each knob does. So at this, at this moment I have Time Warp selected, which is a combination of a delay and a pitch shifter. And you can of course lock the delay to the BPM with these selectors. Or you can set the delay time with amount of milliseconds. Then you have a decay time, which is the feedback of the, the delay. And then you have a focus knob, which controls the pitch shifter. And I'll show you how this sounds. Let's lock it to the BPM first. There we go. And now I set the scent to pre-fader and I'm gonna turn this fader down so we only hear the effects. There we go. So now if I turn this one, So let's leave it at the shortest delay time and increase the feedback. It's 
a pretty nice effect, right? It sounds really good. And then we have the focus mode, which shifts the pitch. Now it pitches down. Now it pitches up if I go to the right. Cool. So that's where the effects section of this mixer really shines. It's one of those things that uh, some of those effects I wish they would uh, be present in the DB4. Because what they've done is pretty interesting. They, Some of these effects combine two effects. It's like you have two effects engines. And some effects use one engine and some use two engines. So for instance the time warp uses a delay plus a pitch shifter. And this is a pitch plus reverb, so you get this shimmer reverb, right? Let's turn on some music. DK time speaks for itself. Pitch down, and in the middle it's, it doesn't pitch. And to the right it pitches up. We get this shimmer-like Shimmer reverb. So on this reverb, for instance, the, the interval knob does not change the milliseconds, obviously, because it's not it's not a delay. Uh, the decay time is the dec the decay is the decay time of the, the reverb, so how long the tail of the reverb is, and the interval actually is a, a low pass filter. So as you can hear, lots of eyes. Turn this down. Kind of rolls off the highs. Pretty nice. So there's a whole range of effects. I mean, we have flangers, we have uh, resonator plus a gate, we have a delay plus reverb. So you get control over a delay and a reverb. So with the delay plus reverb, which is a very interesting combination as well, of course, we have the interval that changes the delay time in milliseconds. We have a decay time, which does the same as the time warp. It's the feedback of the delay. And then we have a focus, which works as a low pass and high pass filter depending on which side you're turning it so if you turn it to the right it becomes a high pass filter if you turn it to the left it becomes a low pass filter for the reverb I think it's cool. <laughs> all right, so uh, we also have a filter plus delay. Uh, there's all kinds of, it's a pretty nice selection of effects. It's not a whole lot, but it's it, it does the job and they're very well tuned. So they sound really good. They're easy to control. So yes, you have to know for each effects a little bit what each knob does. But of course the big, big upside is that you get a lot of control over your effects. I mean, you have three knobs that control some aspects of the, the the effects you chose. Plus you can lock them to the BPM. You get a, a separate level knob plus an on-off switch. You can also cue your effects. So that's very nice as well. So you can actually listen to your effects before you are sending the channel signal to the effects unit. Very cool. So moving on, we also have a send return. So we can use an external effects 
and for which I've now chosen the Octo track. So let's again use the same track. And by the way, this track is now finally released. I know some of you are watching this video and know that I've been using this track for pretty much all my Zone Mixer reviews. And a lot of you have requested this for me to um, actually release this track, <laughs> which now finally is. So if you want to buy it, head over to davemac.bandcab.com and you will find it there. So let's move over to the external send return. The cool thing about a send return is that you can actually add your own effects units. And for this, I've chosen the Octo track for now, which is now acting like an effects unit. So for this to work, I have to check a couple of things. First, of course, we set the slider to external or to dual, right? If we set it to dual, we use both the internal effects and the external effects and I send the signal of this channel to both at the same time. For now, let's set it to external. So this channel's output will be sent out of the mixer into the FX unit and the FX unit's output will come back into the mixer and will be added to the master output. Then we have this little section, as I explained before, it's the external, external return volume. Yeah, if I set it to off, I can send this signal to an effects unit, but nothing will come back because the volume is set to zero. We can also route it to the filter, which is very nice. So let me demonstrate this. With this track again, I'm going to send it to the effects unit. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. It's very subtle. There we are. And this is the external effects. So the cool thing about the send return is that you can send this signal temporarily to an effects unit to add a little bit of effects temporarily like this. Let me turn off the reverb. There, that's the reverb, the, the, sorry, there's the delay. I'm just sending it temporarily to the effects unit by turning this and turning it down again. You get this nice funk and it will fade away. Now I can route the external return to the filter. Turn on the filter right here. Let's turn it off on the channel. So we are left with the external return here. Cool. So that is the send return. And I can set it to dual for just for the fun of it. And let's set the internal effects to the time warp version. Ah, oh, let's set it to the pitch reverb. And let's send it now. And let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna turn on the effects unit, of course. You can hear the combination of the delay from the Yoko track and the reverb of the internal effects unit. Cool. 
would have been nice if we've we would have been able to route the effects to the filter as well. But I, I guess that internally, because we can route, we can set the effects to affect a certain channel or the master output, this is simply not possible uh, because of the internal routings. That's my guess. Of course, there are a couple of effects that actually have a filter built in, like the filter delay as a filter plus a delay. There's also a master insert, and for that I'm using the analog heat currently. An analog heat is a warming slash distortion unit. You can also use the master insert for things like a compressor. So if you are playing a lot of old school vinyl or you are a live act like I am, then having a warming unit or something to beef up your sound a little bit to, com to compete with uh, normal DJ levels, uh, is very needed and that's where the master insert is very useful. So to use the master insert you need a cable like this. I'm gonna just unplug it. Oh, there we go. The master insert has a left and a right out slash input and it uses... you need a, uh, you need a Y cable for that. And a Y cable uses TRS jack, which is basically a stereo jack, to two monophonic jacks, right? So we have a left and a right master insert. And on this, I'm going to plug this stereo part of the cable into the left master insert right here. And then I have a left and a right mono, mono jack. And the left mono jack is insert into the input of the effects unit. And the right jack is plugged into the output of the effects unit. So now what happens is it uses the tip of the insert, the, the stereo part of the cable, to send the signal out of the mixer into the input of this effects unit. Then the effects unit outputs its wet signal back into the sleeve part of the stereo jack into the mixer and then it will come back into the master output. So you're actually, just before the master output, you're actually inserting a signal and then it, it's routed through an effects unit back into just before the master output, then it's, the signal is sent out of the master output. So you need actually two cables for this, of course, because the left insert is used for input and the, the left input and left output of the effects unit and a right insert is used for the right input and the right output of the effects unit. I hope this makes sense. The cool thing is that I now see this track again and I can just destroy the sound entirely. Let's do that. There's this unit. The cool thing about this is that I can, if you have an effects unit on the master insert with a dry wet, you can actually use it as an additional effects uh, send return as well on the master output. Because this way I can simply have the dry signal like this and then blend in the destruction. that makes sense so don't forget the master insert because it's a very versatile thing as long as your effects unit that you're using is versatile as well you can use it as an extra cent return or simply to compress your output signal it speaks for itself you have the volume you have the uh, mix between the cue and the mix and you have a split function but the cool thing about this is, is if you are a live act or you you're a DJ and you're not using um, uh, headphones or not all the time, you can actually use it as an additional send return. You can use the output of this root channels to it, send it to an effects unit, for instance, and then have it come back into the A channel as a return channel. 
Yeah, so you have a third send return option that way. Very cool. So that's this. If you want to get the most out of this mixer, that's how I would do it. I would add all these external effects and use all these routing options to really get creative with sending signals to different effects units and uh, blend them into each other. This is, of course, an analog mixer. And it really, really sounds really good. And the sound is really, really amazing what you can expect from an analog mixer. As soon as we start to mix tracks together, it's where it really shines. And so that's, yeah, that's where it, where it really shines. The sound is really, really good. And another cool thing is that you can really push the levels because it's an analog mixer. If you, I have to emphasize this, do not do this with digital mixers because you destroy your sound, your ears, the speakers, everything. So don't push digital mixers into the reds. Just don't do it. But on analog mixers, you can actually do it because it will just saturate the sound in a pretty nice way, actually. So let's see how that sounds. And let's just turn up this channel. There we go. See, it, it distorts, but in a very subtle, no, not so subtle, but it distorts in a very nice way. Don't overdo it though. Okay. So that is the PX5. I'm very enthusiastic about it, this mixer. I actually might end up using this together with the DB4. You can actually see me use the PX5 in combination with the DB4 for a track I created on YouTube, which you can find right here, there. Um, and I've uh, shared the routing I use there in, in, in one of the comments and uh, the combination of those two mixers is pretty crazy. You can do some very, very cool stuff. In conclusion, the PX5 is an amazing mixer with a great sound. The, the combination of the analog side with the digital effects is really cool. It's very flexible in, in that you can use a send return. You can use this as a send return. You can have a fifth channel, you have a master insert for something like a distortion unit or otherwise. It has the, the analog filter, it has a great variety of FX. It's a pretty complete mixer and fairly easy to understand. It's one of the more, if we, if we talk about pro gear, it's one of the most accessible pro mixers of Zone, um, I think. But it's not, if, if you 
let's say you've only played on Pioneer in your life and you walk up to the DJ booth and you see this mixer. Yeah, you will understand most of it, but a couple of things will be pretty confusing, which might turn some people off, which I think is a shame because it's it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of, piece of gear. If you like more of a basic kind of mixer, which under the hood has a lot of cool potential baked in for routing stuff through uh, channels and send return things and everything, then the PX5 really is for you. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. So subscribe to my channel and head over to davemac.live for some cool stuff. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Head over to davemac.live if you are interested in video courses, sample packs, or if you want me to teach you, or you want me to mix and master your track, you can contact me through my website. Over there, you can also subscribe to my mailing list so that you will be the first to know when I release new content. Cheers.